Anthropometry and Ergonomics. In today's video, we are going to explain two very important sciences that we use every day, but that you may not identify. We want you to guess, do you know the name of a science that studies the size and the proportions of the human body? If you reply is anthropometry, you're one step closer to know the basic principles of the science. Anthropometry is the science that obtains systematic measurements of the human body. It was first developed in the 19th century by physical anthropologists for study of human variation and evolution of all populations. Not all humans have the same measurement. Imagine that we did sign a bet for both a Mexican and a Danish man. Certainly, that will not work, right? That's where anthropometry comes useful. Here is a timeline of the evolution of anthropometry. In the ancient civilizations of Rome, Greece, and Egypt, anthropometry was used for cultural purposes, for example, artwork. Sculptures were a sign of power and they had to have desirable and symmetric attributes. Now, let's talk about the Renaissance. During the Renaissance, artists used anthropometric measurements by applying human proportions. The best example is the Vitruvian Man. Did you know Leonardo da Vinci obtained the human measurements by analyzing cadavers? Now, let's go all the way to the 20th century. Now, let's talk about the 20th century. Morphometrics, a variation of anthropometry, was created. The human measurements are now obtained by the help of computers, especially by computational modeling. Scientists divided the human shape in three main body constitutions, ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. Did you know that if you extend your arms horizontally and you measure from one tip of your finger to the other, you get an equal measurement of your height? And if you multiply the measurement of your head by seven or eight times, you also get your height measurement. Other measurements you can get by using your own body are that your hand equals the length of your neck and that the measurement of your foot is the same of your forearm. Now you know more about anthropometry, but do you know exactly for what it's used for? Well, a lot of professional areas use them, but we will focus on its use in industrial design and architecture. A good match between the design and the user improves efficiency, safety, health, and comfort. In conclusion, it improves the quality of our lives. Here is where the science of ergonomics comes in. The objective of ergonomics is to create a safe, comfortable, and productive space. Did you know that a good ergonomic design improves productivity and attitudes? The discipline of ergonomics was established in the 1940s as a solution for the problems that design elements and equipment were having. These issues were first recognized in the military sector. In 1949, the Ergonomics Research Society was established. But what exactly are ergonomics? We will give you an example. Luther considered the ergonomic design of office chairs often used for computer operations. The lower spine should be S rather than C-shaped for comfort, which means that the pelvis should be rotated forward. So how do anthropometry and ergonomics work together? For the purposes of ergonomic design, anthropometrics offers information about the average human build. For example, this gives chair makers data they can use to devise more comfortable seating. Ergonomics not only use anthropometry as data, they also use biomechanics, environmental physics, applied psychology, and social psychology. Now, we will give you some examples of day-to-day -day ergonomics so you can understand a little bit better. A chair must have a seat height of 16 to 21 inches and a seat depth of 2 to 4 inches to be considered ergonomic. Shelves should be located at eye height to avoid reaching problems. Opt for natural light because it improves mood, focus, and sleep. 
Your mattress should not be too hard nor too soft to have a good back support. Ergonomists can help you to identify which user characteristics you should take into account during your design process. This is important when you consider how much individuals vary in terms of body size, strength, mobility, sensory sensitivity, and mental ability. There are three main categories of ergonomics, physical ergonomics, psychological ergonomics, and organizational ergonomics. Physical ergonomics looks at how human anatomical, anthropometric, physiological, and biomechanical characteristics relate to physical activity. Psychological ergonomics studies mental processes, example, perception, cognition, memory, reasoning, and emotion, and how people interact with products, systems, and environments. Organizational ergonomics is about optimizing the organizational structures, policies, and processes of socio-technical systems. The contemporary theories of corporality are Bona fide spaces. These spaces are materially constructed and composed of volumes and delimited by real elements. They can be expressed in geometric terms of the normative architecture, building container, and are mainly related to vision and also related to anthropometry and ergonomics. Fiat spaces. These are created by the movement trajectory of human movement in space. They are temporal, programmatic, and they change accordingly to human activity. The interstitium is the space between the user and the volumes that surround him. Interstices. These remain between the previous two. These spaces are the area in which human beings place their objects, marking their territories and expressing their identity. The interstices are related to human territoriality and individualization of space. Without anthropometry and ergonomics, we will not be able to have comfortable and functional spaces. Both of these sciences are key for ideal performance and productivity. As we mentioned previously, a space with a good design equals a happy life. <laughs>